When I'm analyzing film, I I usually know where it came from. Like I, like I, I captured it, or you, or a yeah. student captured it. Right. So I know a lot more about what's going on. And here I don't. Uh, I know more now from having watched it. Although I have to say that, I mean, I knew Fred was the director of the University Elementary School, so I kind of figured we were going to see something hmm. from that school. And uh, so that school's unusual, and this is an unusual. I don't know that, yeah. But I don't know anything about its history, and I was happy to see it was a science concept. Not that I necessarily know all that much about it, but you know, so it's close to my interests. And uh, I guess for the record, I'm usually working with students, so here's yeah. Student, so here we go. Yeah. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I, what I would do is I would. Uh, I'm kind of usually looking at this a little bit. These kids look pretty young. I mean, definitely in elementary school setting. I don't remember how much we were told about it. It's pretty clear who the teacher is. I think it's interesting to me before the record even starts that they're sitting on the floor and they're obviously mm -hmm. geared up to do something. There's a center to mm -hmm. the group and uh, it's not just the teacher. There's other stuff there. Kids are holding paper and stuff so you know, we know something's coming. And uh, just looking around the room like there's supplies, there's a nice chair. Mm -hmm. There's no chairs for cattle, see any chairs for kids. So this is, uh, you know, kind of a, looks like a elementary school part of a classroom, and I'd have circle time here. I don't really study elementary school. <laughs> there we go. So what I would do first is yeah. I would just play it all the way through, and uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about what what's there to, to see yeah. from my perspective and your perspective, and then we'll try and dig in. Sounds so let's, good. let's head at it. All right. Grab yeah, this. grab a pencil yeah. or whatever. There you go. Okay. And right here, I'll give you some of oh, this yeah, great. paper. And right. we, you, you got a copy of that here. for me? There should be yeah, two copies. Oh, there is two. There are two. Yeah, copies. okay. Right. So here's some paper for you. And okay. Let's, let's hit it. All righty. Play. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Here we We're go. Ready. <laughs> funny, you know, I've watched this now a yeah. bunch of times, but it is as compelling each time around, and there's more to see. Hmm. So it's exciting, which is the best part of doing this kind yeah, of work, yeah. which is like, hey, this is cool, there's things to see. <laughs> okay, um, so right. what I've done is to make a list of things that were interesting to me, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I can go down that list. And yeah, you're, that you're doing good. something too, couple, so... Yeah, yeah, so why don't we I'll take turns? Yeah. No, we'll yeah. take turns because you've got a shorter list than <laughs> well, yeah, me. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll say my thing and then you say your thing. We'll yep. go back and forth until we exhaust the list and then maybe we can figure out what we want to look at more closely. So I guess the first thing overall, probably because I started by you know looking at the whole 
setting is that this teacher is doing a lot of work to manage what's going to be visible. And then I also, you know, there's this central thing she's building in the space, and she wants everyone to see that. And then mm -hmm. she's using kids' bodies to market persistently for other people to see. So there's also, it feels to me like she's setting up a comparative seeing. And that's like a complicated piece of work. So that's my first one, managing what yeah. is visible. And I thought the finger, it's one of these kids' fingers, gets put someplace and held. It's like a level pointer, hmm. right? So that's my first one. I'll check that off. Go that's ahead. That's cool. No, okay. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I was thinking one of the first things I keyed on was, was body positions looking down. And then also if you look horizontally, how uh, the kids are going up and down. Uh, so I feel like we've walked in, they're established, and there's going to be some changes in these body positions. And, and those are important and they're visible to us so we should look so uh, just I want to understand so like we're looking we're looking at, right. like at about a 50 degree angle down yeah. into the thing which is good because we can see yeah. what she's building right right with their help but then right I'm understanding you to say they're also they have a point of view that is not ours like no one in this right. scene Absolutely. has yeah. our point yeah. of view yeah. yeah and so we ought to be paying attention to serially when they're when they're using this visibility she's creating and when they're doing something else, like producing, yeah. you're doing other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I love that. Okay. Uh, so the a second thing I saw, uh, so you've got that on your list, right? Yeah, it's We're going to be able to come draw, back to that. I draw, I draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do, uh, <laughs> I usually draw. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of like their gaze, the organization of yeah. their gaze, how they're taking up what she's making visible or she intends to make visible. <laughs> So a uh, second thing I was really interested in is how their bodies are mostly her body, I think, but that's a question, right? Yeah. How bodies are used as displays for the thing that is otherwise visible in the setup. So if we were to call the jar and the sand and the water and the rocks the setup, yeah. there's, there's action on the setup, which is part of the space that's made visible, but then there's, there are depictions of things that, that, that are produced with the body. And I think these, I think her body is used really artfully. And I don't mean just yeah. gestures in the gestural stage, if you view that as a bubble in front of her, but like her whole body is being used for something. And then I also kind of feel like she's picking up on kid, kids' body displays or postural organizations as, as meaningful displays. It's like she can, she can read a quality of the thing they're talking about from their bodies. Yeah. So bodies as displays seems to me like a very happening thing here. And I, I just think that's cool because, you know, our group works on embodied cognition mostly in mathematics, and here's, here's sort of the body and the body's work in understanding uh, a scientific phenomenon that's playing out. Okay, that's, that's my cool. second thing. Okay. Go ahead. I remember this is the first thing I've ever, I no, ever noticed when we watched this clip, and this is a great screen freeze because uh, I thought it was like, I, I thought of this as like gender V's. Like, I think there's like a, there's a V of boys and there's a V oh. of girls. And I, and I oh, actually you really are that. seeing this spatially. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You're really right. Adam Kendrick you're point right. of view. This I know, I know, that's true. Cool, I love, I love but, that. Yeah, okay, so I see that. That's like the boys what? are a V and the girls, including the teacher. Are, are, yeah. In so this who's particular, this? Is this a boy? Uh, I think that is a girl. I think that the is very a girl, bottom of the screen. But she walked. So here we can actually... We know the record. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. They can see that. <laughs> yeah, they can And see she that. walks, right? I think it would be... Oh, yeah? Be... Okay. Ooh, oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. Uh, right, right. So she, she's the one that walks. Oh, no, maybe she didn't. Yeah, yeah, she did. And we... Oh, yeah, okay. Right? She's the one that... Yeah, there, we... there she is. Oh, wait. She went right through right? the middle. So she was there. Oh, my God. Look at her path. And there she goes. So she goes in and forms like a huddle with this little girl yeah. over here on the right. Yeah. Just for briefly. She's like dropping something off with her, it looks like. Where'd she go? She went from here to here. So she, she makes a loop through the... Right, and from what I remember, there was something wow. about a boy. This boy here, what, this boy is touching her. One read on it was he is oh, making within her feel the, uncomfortable. Oh, within the group, within the ASU analysis? Yeah, or, I remember that, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, so he, he does something to make yeah, her Yeah, but see how she's like right there, like bring it back a little bit, scrub back. So she's like down on the ground. Yeah. And th those two girls seem together. Yeah, to that's really, yeah, Making yeah, yeah. something that's. Yeah. Okay, so I, so you just, okay. you, you've got these two Gender Vs these. in this movement. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll go to this <laughs> other thing because I think it's, uh, I think it's very related. So I was, uh, I was also 
really interested in the size of the huddles or the widths. I mean, I'm thinking of, we've been using some of Goffman's writing to yeah. help understand engagement contours and things like that. So those have a different scale here, uh, right? So the, the first visual thing she produces and many of her own embodied displays of the scientific phenomena, they assume and generally they get everyone. So it's kind of a big width. Yeah. But then uh, yeah. I noticed that yeah. when the little girl who's, who's sitting to the teacher's immediate left and who speaks Spanish after a, an opening in English, there's a, there's a really intense width between the teacher yeah. and that girl yeah. that actually visually disattends the others. Right. And she so, there, so this that. thing that she's built for the visual assembly of a scientific phenomena is suddenly kind of dropped as she yeah. like really sinks in and works with this girl. And of course, uh, you know, we know that like a classroom is not a setting, it is a, mm. it's like a manifold of settings that's constantly in flux. Right, that's so, a good way, yeah, yeah. So like the, with the little girl go, takes a loop through the center, hunkers down with the little girl with the, with the black hair when, she, when they're down here together, this guy kind of gets pushed out and I think, you know, from Adam's point of view, he's kind of yeah. being managed yeah. out. And then, so they have a little width, a little huddle that then yeah. disintegrates. He might push it apart, right? I don't know what it is. But there's all those things <laughs> going on. So that's fantastic. But I just, so I think that yeah, this, there's cool. kind of a sharp drop in the scale of width huh. as she huddles up with this girl for this really intense thing that's communicated in Spanish. And so one thing that interests me, and I'm kind of remembering it got a lot of attention in the, the main analysis bit, is how do they transit? How do you transition between widths that are differently scaled? And so, you know, Fred had this paper. I don't remember who he wrote it with. It's, it was called like "Who's Got the Floor?" Or, "When's the Floor?" Hmm. Or, I don't know. I think it's "Who's Got the Floor?" The thing he wrote with Jeff Schultz was "When as a Context," but. Uh, both of those papers bear on this issue. It's like, it's like, what is the scale of the social aggregate that's doing something? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's very, and we should yeah. pay attention to that too. Yeah, it's made up of many of these other things we're talking about, but there's this very basic, yeah. basic thing. Yeah. You know? Okay. That and there can be sense. multiples. Okay, so we talked really about good. that. I was, I was just yeah, going to yeah. put as like a little footnote in that. <laughs> One of the reasons bodies as displays are, are interesting to me, and the finger in particular, is oh, right, you right. need to make certain things persistent to be talk aboutable. And yeah. so, if I put, if I ask your, so put your yeah. finger on the jar. So if I force you, I'll go ahead and put the pointer on. The oh jar. yeah. If we put the pointer on the jar, <laughs> yeah. that's like persistent for us to talk about. Yeah. It, you know, or if if we were to circle something, and so I think when like it's like this little boy or those, I think this little girl gets in later with her finger. But mm -hmm. this boy has like yeah, a... Yeah, she's in there now. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's got it there yeah. right now. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think when this little boy comes in and puts his finger there, it's something he can do that becomes a persistent part of the comparative talk she's trying to set up. Yeah. And if he really holds his finger mm -hmm. in place, and for some reason the water level is dropping as it sediments out, then he would be holding his finger at a place where something used to be. Yeah. And the fact that it used to be there in the yeah. past could be absolutely that central sense, to yeah. whatever the science is they're doing. So. Right. Okay, you got, you got another great. one? No, I, uh, well, uh, let's see. Uh, looking more at their talk, I think these, I mean, you've said it for sure, but I think this idea of matter and space is like this end goal she's leading to and keying on words like rise and bottom in relation to particular things she's making kids do with the jar is like super important to how they're going to take away mm -hmm. uh, matter, mm -hmm. what matter and space might mean. I also thought a lot about Dan's, uh, with our work with Dan and the rising of the, the pencil. Oh, the kind I of think, gestural assessments yeah, of word really, meaning yeah. for vocabulary yeah. acquisition. Yeah. Yeah, actually he's in, he's in group with us. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Yep. Got to read all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. so, so I got another one, which is that, uh, there's two that are related, so I'll just say them both. So uh, I thought I, there's kind of a, she goes into this kind of asking known answer questions like a, you know, initiation response evaluation series, but she leaves stubs open for choral responses. And uh, uh, it's not that she's doing that. I mean, that happens everywhere. I do it all yeah. the time in my <laughs> teaching. It's like happens everywhere. 
but that she's she's doing that in a way that's interleaved with the demonstration, which leads to the entailments of the of the setup. So she's showing them a physical model of something, and then she gets into these IRE sequences with these open stubs for choral responses. What's supposed to go in that spot, sequentially across her utterances, are building up the thing that she thinks the so-called experiment shows. Huh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when she says, I don't know, she says, we know, <laughs> and then there's this big gap, and then she delivers it. I think it's like that matter occupies space or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think the orchestrated yeah, pairing cool. of that is actually the is the is the scientific statement that the lesson in some ways is about, and uh, I think it's really really fascinating that she's uh, she's trying to recruit them into its co-completion with her. So I know that in yeah. the in the Arizona meetings, many people were skeptical about whether yeah. anything like that had been shown. <laughs> yeah. or what the hell right, these right. kids would know. I just think it's inter it's a very artful performance yeah. of the sort of entailment structure of you see this and we're talking about these kinds of entities in that thing and when we see it comparatively A leads to B leads to C yeah. and so we know that yeah. D yeah. you know yeah. and she's doing that so she's performing that yeah. and there they're right there, you know, they're pitching in whatever yeah. the hell they're pitching in. So we would care what they're pitching in, right? And I, I, I think right. that's, that's neat. So yeah, actually that covers that covers both of those things. So yeah. the other thing that I'm do I would typically would be doing is starting to work up my notes yeah. with an idea that uh, hmm. we're gonna go back we're gonna dive back Into in and we're gonna yeah. do something with that. So hmm. um, I guess as I'm working up the notes, uh, and I would often use like another color. Oh, oh yeah, we yeah. just have all these colors. <laughs> yeah. So I'll pull out a red thing. So I would, <laughs> yeah, I would be good. like, I would, I would be thinking that there's something major here for my interests about managing displays, the persistence for comparison, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then I didn't really say this, but I think it's it's a feature of this kind of. Uh, scientific modeling and demonstration that you do the thing and it is a self-erasing process so the initial state once you set it in motion is obliterated by subsequent states and the final state often is something you're supposed to look at but it hides its history of production mm. and so you have this problem with you. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. that the physical visible thing she's managing this visual theater but the the thing is like gone, just at right. the point that she needs to say, and so because of A, <laughs> then B, then C, yeah. we know D, it's like all that shit's gone. Right. And, and so something has to happen to make it yeah. visible. And so, so I, I mean, my belief is, and I, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't, crap, I don't know if I've ever written about this, but <laughs> that one of the reasons for these body demonstrations and reenactments is to deal with this problem of the evanescence of the phenomena you want to talk about. Hmm. So you kind of have to fix the phenomena for talk. And so it's related to this kid holding his finger on something. Right. Possibly on something that's no longer there. Right. Like where something record, used to be, yeah. you know. And and so th this is like a basic problem in science. It's sort of like hmm. we're talking about shit that you can't it's not like this pen yeah it's like something that happens and then it's gone and it's like we want to talk about that yeah. and so you have to do you're gonna have to do some work to make that possible that's that that is the work of scientific practices and hope so for me this is fascinating as a version of them doing it you could see this from you know the lofty view of proper understanding of states of matter or mm -hmm. you know whatnot physical science and, and think it's wrong, but I don't think there's anything wrong with how this is happening. I think it's 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 central to yeah, what it is. Yeah. Okay, so I would be, so I was just saying I would be going back in. So I think for me I think kind of displays are a big deal. Yeah. And the relationship to persistence and whatnot. I really yeah. I really liked your body formation. Yeah, oh, so yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna <laughs> so I would say that I'd say that that, that is one thing to do. Mm -hmm. For me, I would really like to spend some time with you talking about uh, body yeah. uh, body formations. 
So I just call them body yeah. forms, yeah, yeah. and then I'll put in parens here the V. Well, there's two V's. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I kind of really like that. I, I, I think I'm I'm still like really keen on the the scale at yeah, which engagement cool. contours yeah. are produced. So that's like right in our work. Yeah. Like it's right in our wheelhouse. Um, right? Yeah, that's cool. And so I think you and know. There's no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I guess it's just kind of like the width. There's kind of the scale of a width, and there's a, you know. Anyway, there's so there's there's kind of a drop and then it gets bigger again. It's yeah. big, small, big, and, mm -hmm. and we were just saying it's multiple. So I guess I would also say in here that it's multiple. So, right. You know, so that's something to to hang on to. The other thing I'd be doing, like if we were doing this for real, and it was like it was going to have consequences for what someone was writing, or you know, in particular, if I was teaching and doing this. Is I'd, I'd be making notes and we'd be making a record, well we are making a record but we're not going to use it later and that, that record would get used in order to work up the analysis because I the next time I do that I would really like to be standing on top of the work we're doing now. Right, to not have to and, and, it and uh, just a huge frustration in my teaching, it's not with you, I'm yeah. not telling you, but it is that I'll often have really intense sessions with students and what I have found is that if I don't if I don't make some durable record, yeah, the next time I meet with them, we'll just start over from scratch. Yeah. And it's like, no. Yeah. yeah. No none of us our lives are that long, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I don't know, it's just I totally agree. That's with always that. something yeah. that's kinda of freaked me out. Oh, yeah. and then I think for me for me, a fourth thing would be the kind of, you know, logical entailments or sort of we're building an argument that, you know, the demo is an argument. Uh, about uh, a scientific principle, uh, and so I I think that's kind of really important. So I would, you know I would say something about the you know the epistemic status of the experiment. We we know something. So that to me seems important. Yeah. yeah. And I'm wondering about other things you were talking about. I really I, I really like the play of gazes. And yeah, like yeah, and the coming together and apart the, and how that all. Yeah. yeah. I also I mean I'm. Uh, some things I was thinking about, I mean, related would be if you flipped the whole thing and just looked at the paper and the, the things in this and, and thought about positions of things, that's interesting. And then I also think you would just made me think to draw out a timeline just with, with if this is each different person. Just looking at how talk is, is structured over mm -hmm. over the sequence of time. Yeah, I mean, a, lo I, a lot of these kids appear not to talk right, at all. Right, not to talk at all, right. Like yeah. this, this yeah. I don't, I, 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 yeah. I can't think of an utterance from this right. girl. I'm not sure I have an utterance yeah. from him. A lot of him. physical. I don't think I have any yeah. utterance from her. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing something. Yeah, oh, I don't right. know what he's doing. I think this kid gets involved in Spanish. Yeah, he says a few things. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I think he offers to point, and then he he has some private exchanges with the teacher about the pointing. And then she I remember this locked. this little girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like she has a private yeah. viewing box for the whole right, thing. Right, right. That's a good way. And to that was it. that got discussed in the yeah. meetings. Yeah. And, and there was a question of like, is she? Being excluded, or yeah, she does. She does show up with a point. Right, at, she has a point at the end. At, well, oh, I think okay. at just a time when the point may no longer be relevant. Uh, that's interesting. Which I think is, it, you know, we can maybe we'll get into that. But yeah. the idea would be, you can kind of, you can make inferences about who's who's like a central participant, and who kind of really is with knowing what's going on and not by when their physical contributions, yeah. even if they're not speaking, do they show up in the right, yeah. at the right moment. And if they show up okay. at, the, at really the Turn wrong shorts. moment, Turn, yeah, then yeah. you know, you kinda, you kinda have to think like something is a little off yeah. the rails here. Yeah. So, just a thought. That's a really good I don't point. Know, yeah. you know, and I, and yeah. she got a lot of attention because I think she's, she's possibly the only visibly African American yes. child yeah. in the group. Yeah. And so I think our field has a lot of attention to, yeah. to such children, and rightly so. Yeah. But I think we have to be non-romantic about like when, you know, when is a contribution fitted hmm. in a way that demonstrates ongoing mutual understanding? And I don't know. So that I, I remember in the Spencer meetings wondering. Okay, so I, I mean, I'm most interested in these body displays and how what might be a vis visible in the physical setup then has to be managed with bodies because it's gone. Yeah. 
So uh, that to me, is, okay. of course, is like I'm really worked yeah, up about yeah, that. that. Sounds... And you might be really I'm worked totally up on board with that. about yeah. configurations yeah. and paths and movements. Yeah. And I, I think that'd be dynamite. So we should start over yeah. again. And I guess this time we'll allow ourselves to be more rambunctious about <laughs> stop, stopping. stopping and looking for stuff. Do we really have, only have one? Oh, more? I that's okay. No, that's need. cool. Okay, 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 we need it. Okay. Okay, so this is R H. Page one, and I'll just keep going over here. Okay, we're gonna go. Yep. And we have this this trans oh, right, right, right. relation of uh, Spanish and what is identified as Spanglish. <laughs> I actually don't know what Spanglish means <laughs> analytically. Well, that's kind of. Uh, but I would do one thing. I guess. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, is endless. But the uh, so child child two. If I'm assuming this is the beginning of her, of the girl to her left. Her substantive turn it mm -hmm. talk and contribution. Miss Guevara cuando if you wiggle como una coca cola in un bottle y con, cuando lo abres it goes up yeseca and then the teacher answers in Spanish and then the next turn is entirely in Spanish uh -huh. third turn teacher entirely in Spanish child entirely in Spanish, teacher entire, entirely in Spanish with the exception of the product name, which is cool. in yeah. sense. Child entirely in Spanish, child, well, child, uh, another child, child three, this was one of these boys over here mm -hmm. in Spanish, child four in Spanish, although bubbles, looks like bubbles is not a, I don't know what the word in Spanish is for bubbles. bubbles yeah, it looks the same, yeah. We can look that up, but now we have English and Spanish together, together. again. And so, you know, it, it is interesting that it's not until line 20. It, we get them together. Child 2 produces English and Spanish together at 1, and then English yeah. and Spanish reappears together at 28, line 28, and then again at line 31, another child, not the first child, and then the teacher produces it again. So. The, it, look, it feels to me like there are these like inter-language zones yeah, yeah. where within the formal course of instruction, I, I would think, and I might be completely wrong about this, but that, uh, I guess I don't want to keep going on this, but just that yeah, the English is used to make, is to get the floor and get a bid. And That's then the work, the work, the work is, yeah. is is pursued within Spanish, and then as it comes back out, there are turns allocated to other children who choose to speak Spanish, and then it becomes a mix of Spanish and English, and ends huh. with las burbujas, the bubbles in Spanish. Okay, this is yeah. what I want you to do. Yeah. And so that transition point, that's kind of a major transition point, right, between los, las burbujas, Buhas and OK, they're back in English. Yeah. So when the when the business of instruction starts again, they're back in English. Yeah. I thought that was really neat. I hadn't heard much of that in so the, the translanguage. So the width, that little yeah. small width, which happens between line six, I would guess. Line six and line nineteen, because I I think at twenty. I think the teacher's expanding the scale of the width. She's now she opening, opens up to opening relevant next turns in Spanish for, I'm assuming, kids who speak Spanish. Like, I don't see any, I don't, you know, the, uh, the, the African-American girl we've been watching, the little boy who's holding his finger there, this other boy, these, I don't think they say anything in Spanish. Yeah. And we learn later that this is a, this is a multi-language right. classroom right. by design. So the width is related to, to uh, shift in language. Shift in language. I thought this is yeah. really neat. Yeah. The shift in the scale yeah. of the width and shift in, in, the shift in language. Yeah. And so the, the scale of being width also involves what language are we going to speak. Kind of cool. That, I don't yep. think that came up in the meeting. I don't think so either. OK. At any rate, we should start at what time is it? Crap. <laughs> we're almost done. OK, we're going to have one more go through, Sounds and then, good. then we're going to stop, because yep, yep. this is not our business, okay. per se. Sounds okay? good. Sounds good. So we're going to start at the very beginning. Here, I'll go back. Right, you've been doing, you've been doing all the... Oh, either way, whatever, yeah. The touching <laughs> of the interface. OK, so... Hmm. 
Let's watch it through without stopping okay. once more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. We can talk, Here we go. but... Here we go. Yeah. So everyone pulls in. They're going to see this. I do think, in relation to Wiz, she holds on to the teacher's arm. There's eye. G I'm thinking about different types of Wiz. Eye gaze, holding, mm. uh, talk. Okay. Just there these kind yeah. of. Uh, there's like yeah. Phys physical yeah, affiliation. Phys yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. 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 Just okay. go. Look at how much. Hold on. We're gonna let it. Cause right now the sand is going like this, and it's dancing too. So. Yeah. Uh, That's a great. I mean. Sorry. Yeah, finished, no, right? yeah, that, yeah, That's yeah, kind yeah, of incredible. Yeah. Well, so... I, that changes how I look at this video. Sorry, that, that freeze, how you just did that. Oh, okay. Or, keep going. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm just thinking that uh, I, as I was just watching, I thought that, I thought that she was... She's, she's caused them all to... Wait. Yeah. It's, something's going to happen. And then, I guess in parallel with the happening, she does... <laughs> she starts to describe what's happening with her body. Yeah. And then she... I think in the Arizona meetings we decided this little this little boy in the black shirt he just is it's like a sympathetic wiggling kind of like this <laughs> this girl puts her head on her shoulder later right yeah right it's right, just right. like they really like this love this teacher and then she picks it up and she binds it to the yeah. phenomena yeah and so there's dancing now okay so that's, that's cool. really cool but yeah. but the reason I want uh, I don't know I didn't want to stop or no, I don't no, know no. if you stopped or oh, I stopped. I don't know is that I think she was using her body as a demonstration for something that's running in parallel in the physical setup. And so the, yeah. the mapping between those two things and how things are bound through language between the body and that is interesting because we know, yeah. as I was I think that the physical setup is going to progress and then the the process is no longer going to be visible. visible. Yeah. And so something's got to hold the process stable for talking about. Yeah. And so that there's something really serious with the level of knowledge and subject matter that has to happen here in order for this to be productive. And, and I think yeah. we're watching her do that. And yeah. I, I would really like to understand that better. That's what the point of this class I'm teaching is. Knowledge analysis. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah. Interaction yeah, yeah, analysis yeah, yeah. of knowledge yeah. and use. It's like, well, okay. So... Yeah, this would be good material to use in that class. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But do you know what it's dancing to? What do you think? It's doing the popcorn. Mm. Do you know what it's dancing to? What do you think? And then she, the kid says jiggling. And she, jiggling. And then she says... The popcorn. So do you think there's a song they know called the popcorn? Oh, that would be interesting. I didn't think because I, I, it's like she's going for popcorn. Yeah, and or she's, some she's, experience. She's got. She's got. She. She. It could be there's a dance. They they've yeah. done a dance called popcorn. I think there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or well, maybe maybe in this there, class, yeah. maybe this yeah. is a states of matter thing, and it's like, it's like, you could dance with different levels of uh, energy and expansiveness to indicate. The energy level of a solid, a liquid, and yeah. a gas. Yeah. And so, partly what happens in a gas is that molecules escape the liquid yeah. form because of their energy level. And so, popcorn would be. Yeah, that makes sense. And she's going to get into popcorn yep. and expansion. So, yeah, it's all good. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Look at Leanne's finger. Now look at the jar and tell me where the sand is at. Move back a little bit so other people can see. So really a pretty intense uh, moment of managing the visibility of something yep. that Liam, Liam, Liam's finger is doing. Yeah. Yeah, Liam, it's Liam. Yeah, and so maybe we've just already talked about that to death already, but I, I just think, I like, how the hell did his finger yeah. get in there? <laughs> Where uh, did she didn't ask him to put? No, his, did she? She might have given him a gaze, but yeah. I, I, I so we don't have that him. transcript. So yeah. this would be a good thing to have the full transcript because right. we could go back and say, has anyone mentioned? There was early talk about a finger. Or I, I'm probably losing I'm not as visible. Uh, yeah. the time scale of our conversation and the time scale of what's in the video. Right, are right. Like all mixed up for me <laughs> now. But where does where does his finger? How does his finger get, get on, there? Get on the jaw? Yeah. Instead of why this word here, like why that finger there? Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, anyway, we can go on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Alexis is touching it. Put your finger there, Alexis. Okay, now look. The sand did what? Went down. It sank. So, this is a, you know, this is like a major embodied demonstration of something that has already happened. Yeah. Right? And if you were, I see you're making I'm a drawing. I'm going to keep drawing while you're going <laughs> I think, I think if, you, if, you know, uh, it's not there to be seen anymore, so it, its visibility for talk has to be right. to do somewhere else. Right. right? I, know, just, I, guess, yeah, I could yeah, beat yeah. that to death forever. I've been beating that to death for my whole career. So. <laughs> the water did what, Liam? Rise. It, it rise. And the rocks stayed at the bottom. Oh. So we know then that matter occupies space. <laughs> Oh, so she so doesn't. She true. doesn't leave D open for them. She just sort of blurts it out. Right, right. She's also. You can tell. This you can hand, see yeah. that she's. She's beginning to. You know, she's beginning. I guess I can just grab that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's beginning to pay attention to that raised hand. And which that's so interesting because she catches like everything else, but this raised hand is so. It takes her so long to get there, and I also. I also now remember that. Oh, this she's is looking a at her watch. She's important. working on her watch. Too. Oh, right, right. <laughs> like, do I have time yeah. for what this kid's about to yeah. do? But yeah. and, and we were well, we didn't, we w shouldn't know this by watching it, but we know that this is a really rare. From what I remember, this is an extremely rare thing that's about to happen with this girl's speed. Yeah, they spoke yeah. about that, right? Well, also look at the. I mean, your I mean, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. Drawings are of these yeah. myths now. It's starting to peel apart. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, the little really boys are standing are going up. Going like, so she's looking at her watch. Yep. She's already she's already delivered the punchline. Yeah, and everyone's like they're ready to move on, and this this little girl's going to get a turn. Yeah, and we we learned in Arizona that this is one of the first times she's right had an right. extended turn at talk. Yeah, in this classroom, and that so in that sense it's interesting that she opens with a mix of English and Spanish. Yeah. This is the third time you've stopped it on a screen that I find powerful and like easy to talk over and easy to think over the ideas. So also the theme of video, like if we did three screen grabs from this and put them on a page with some text is like a really powerful way to Right, which this. is lumbering towards writing about it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, which is this is the this is the visual evidence that we need to fix and make persistence yeah. persistent in order to make our arguments right, right. just Similar as to, she yeah. has the problem of making Maybe visual evidence yeah. persistent for talk. Yeah. And so she's using her body and their bodies to do that. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. Cool. Did so you? Uh, I'm ready to let this go no, yeah, since we're at we're past our yeah. half hour mark. Oh, what yeah. were you What were you working on there? I was just drawing in two. I was trying to. Th I was just. I was like. I did when we started. I was like. I'm just going to draw movement and, and and looking down and like a Kendon kind of whatever way and then looking from the side because I think it's equally important how they're going up and down in a sense. Uh, but I do think this move. Of the, you know, you get these three boys, these three dots of three boys, and they're kind of bouncing around a little bit, but pretty tightly contained. And then you get this big move over here, and then you know, teacher, student, no movement, you know, sitting in this. I was just you know sketching. Uh -huh. And then this was bodies, you know, looking at it from the side, uh, and I was beginning to think how they raise. And so lower. let's do a thing here, which is to kill the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're gonna wa pick a pick a kid you want to follow. Uh, yeah, let's do him. You want to follow him, boy with the kind of and magenta shirt? And she has just made a big move. Yeah, these two are interesting, boys. So you want, to, you want to look at those two in relation to each other? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so what I would propose we do is we back this up. I wonder if we can... I wonder if we can... Uh, uh, can we adjust the yeah. playback, playback properties? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, um, can we, that's not very helpful. <laughs> you mean to play it uh, slow? Play it slow. Or, so we would usually be using QuickTime 7. This yeah. is the... Is there a settings under QuickTime? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, screw it. So, okay, we're going to go <laughs> we back. We can step through it. Well, yeah, you're right. We'll go back to full. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay, so we're back at the beginning. We turned off the sound. And our, it's our job to follow the boy in the marine, maroon shirt, and the girl has disappeared. Girl is there. That's oh, that's her? Move. Oh, wow, she was right in the right, big, right, right at the center. Yeah, she's going to be does this. She, how, do they, yeah. how does she get out? It's amazing, right? 
Okay, well, okay, so we're gonna watch <laughs> the two of them. Yeah. Do you want to play th this girl and boy? Do you want to focus or these two? Uh, uh, this girl and this boy. Okay, got since it. they get so close together yeah. later on, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. So she's. So I, I mean, yeah. He's yeah, they're kind of all in. They're all looking. They've got their papers. Like the girl and the boy, both kind of solo looking right now. All right. They're they're persistently looking through the clearing of the space. They're maybe looking at her body demonstration. Yeah. The boy has started wiggling, and he's she's already, in, she's already yeah. noticed. And now the girl. What's going to lead her to get up and get out of there? See she's, that she, she scoots you know, up. She's a trying to bit. get in close to see the finger where the finger is pointing at a level. Boys coming in over her back. Okay. Now these two boys are. In, She's still there. She's getting closer. She's like really in it. What's going to get her out of there? I don't. I, don't, I right? didn't even see her yeah, as being this is in really there. Neat, right? There. Because she that, looks back. That's like something big. And now she steps up and walks out and around the back. And that other guy, the boy, replaces her in essence. Well, the boy in the red more than the boy in the maroon. The boy in the maroon is no, no more tightly bound to the activity than right, he ever the, was. Right. He's actually doing this kind of air pressure. Yeah. Now the girl is gone out of the scene. Now she's back there. Yeah, they're not really doing and anything like together. She's holding her paper up almost as though she's holding her. Yeah, she's not holding her hand up. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So there is this puzzle of. They don't seem to be interacting. No, they're like two. separate. They're, they're they're quite separate, separate, right? And we're near the end. So I want to I want to see what what gets her to get up and move. Yeah. So she's. Yeah. Oh boy, it's funny. She's down in there pretty tight right now. I'm gonna turn the sound back on. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. So we I think it's one too many touches from this kid. Huh, really? Let's back up some more of that. So I think it's a couple repeated touches, yeah. Paper, touch, see that? She's scooting away. Check. The water did quadrium. Rise. Now he's really touched, and now she notices him again. And he backs up. And he finally gets there. That so it's like his body, it's like he's not in control of his body and keeps getting too close okay, to it, or he's in control of it in his own and way. You can do it. You, you want to do what? Here's how it's... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Hall, Ed Hall's the notion of distance mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 yeah, private, public, personal. I mean, geez, you could map the... But that's a... Mm. Private distance was violated, in a sense, and private distance is dis different between those two. And yeah, both other. boys yeah. come up pretty tight yeah. on her back, and she's scooting forward, yeah. potentially to kind of maintain this bubble yeah. around herself. Yeah, like from Hall's perspective, yeah. I, I I do say that from like where his gaze is going and stuff, uh, uh, she, he may yeah. she may be in his way. Yeah, but I don't think he uh, he doesn't seem to be interacting with her at all. No, unless you think getting getting too close to someone yeah. is interacting with someone, right. which uh, right. is plausible. But it's like there's no talk directed at her. Yeah. There's no talk from her directed. She just she looks back quickly and then pretty quickly gets yeah, up and leaves, yeah, right? Yeah. So that that's okay. Right. Okay. So final cool. thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, when in doing this kind of work with groups, uh, I think it's a really good idea to end with what would I recommend doing next oh, or yeah. something like that. So when, you know, when we're in class, there's always this round structure yeah. and people can make a contribution and they generally do, uh, which I think is, is good because I think there's a reciprocity of if you bring it, then you're giving people something yeah. and they ought to give something back. So there's no one bringing this to us. There's no, <laughs> there's no yeah. project to give back to, but uh, hmm. I kind of feel like because 
because of how this arose, the, I think the, I guess what I would be interested in is how it is that the life experience of a little girl who's to the left of the teacher, yeah. who we learned in Arizona is not, is just coming to participate fully in the kind of the language production in this classroom, really only just beginning to do that. Yeah. Uh, how she manages to get an extended substantive space to do that. And so I would, I would, my recommendation would be to try and figure out how it is that what she is doing both displays her understanding of the physical setup, because I'm remembering, you know, in Arizona, she does a lot of work with the jar, or at least she gets, I think she has an image of what's going on in a Coca-Cola. Yeah. I made that argument in Arizona, so I haven't been paying attention oh, to yeah. it here. But I think she's describing another physical process that she has witnessed unfold, and she's using her own body to demonstrate it. And she has the problem that there's no Coca-Cola bottle here that we can shake yeah. up and watch it foam, yeah. foam over. Uh, and we all think like, oh well, uh, but she has to do this yeah. communicatively, and so uh, she's like she's she's both mirroring the communication issue that the teacher is having with the students with respect to scientific phenomena, but and she is creating a possible analogical case, which is we've got a. We've got the vase yeah. and the stones and the sand and the water and all the physical stuff, all the solids get poured into yep. the liquid. Something happens yeah. and there's an announcement, <laughs> right? And, and I think what she's doing is she's trying to map an experience she's had with a soda bottle, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola and the bubbles, onto that. And as the teacher, I think it's genuinely new for the teacher and as the teacher starts to grasp it, I guess, uh, the girl a is actually uh, providing touches to the jar yeah. apparatus to say, oh, it's like this. So I, I think, uh, I thought in Arizona, and it would be fun to try and find evidence for this, I'm coming to the yeah. end, of, end of my rant here, <laughs> but I thought it would be fun to try and find evidence that she, this little girl fully understands that she is mapping as an analogous case the Coca-Cola bottle onto the jar. Hmm. And the contribution she's making is that I can also explain this in terms of experiences that I've had. Yeah. And so that would be super relevant. Right, she's right. bringing another yeah, physical yeah, case okay. that this scientific principle helps to explain. Right. And she's demonstrating to the teacher that she knows what's going on yeah. because she can map the Coca-Cola bottle that she, with less flair and fluency <laughs> produces in her own body onto the thing the teacher has been articulating with her body. Yeah. And the two cases come together and the science explains them both or could be used to explain them both. Yeah. So that's what I would I would say like knowing that you really want to understand the how this little girl is coming to participate in the social history of this classroom. Honor the thing she's doing. Yeah. Don't say, well, there's not a friggin' bottle of Coca-Cola, which I kind of felt there was like some of that going on in the meetings in Arizona. It was like, no, she's, she's thinking. Yeah. You know, she's doing some work, some yeah, conceptual yeah. work, and try and honor, honor that work and appreciate the fact that the teacher, despite looking at her watch, <laughs> has like slowed yeah, right. down and opened up a space in which to have that happen, even as she loses all of her little popcorns. <laughs> and the kids yeah, are getting up. Popcorns. And they're like all headed someplace else. So you, now it's your turn. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, for them. Well, whoever them is. For them, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I think if this is a hybrid or third space, uh, hmm. I mean, I think that's what. Go ahead. I, I think there's some some aspect of that going on, but there's also I don't think it is a hybrid or third space for a couple other people, and when it's, and I only the only way I could say that is by looking at how they move things and and. Uh, how they move their their bodies to either be in the third space or not be in the third space. So I'd want to explore that. Maybe maybe it's movement and the construction of third spaces, but uh, and, and not and thinking about it as the in this case the unit of all the kids. 
Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Not just not just what you're saying. Cause yeah, because I, I think it's easy to say there's a third space being constructed between here, mm -hmm. in this whole episode, but I don't think you can say that for you know something. And that's fine. I mean, that's but so. Yeah. So in this environment, and just to like stick with this for a second. So in this, in the social history of this classroom, given the little we know about it from the Arizona meetings. This is on a trajectory of being a, a dual language, yeah. bilingual yeah. space for learning about physical science for elementary school kids. And so there are, are several ways to think about hybridization yeah. or, yeah, or cool. thirding. You right. know, this Third. cre wow. yeah, creative yeah, yeah, yeah. space in which the official yeah. and, yeah. and uh, lived spaces of these kids produce something new yeah. instructionally. And one is that. Uh, within the logic of a multilingual physical science education space, you'd like to see both languages being used, and you'd like to see some of these kids who are likely English language first speakers begin to use some Spanish. Yeah. I don't see that happening. Right, right. So what I see instead is kids who appear to be first language speakers of Spanish beginning to use English to manage not only the phenomena, Yeah. Uh, you know, like yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, lesson, yeah. but also uh, managing to to gain legitimate access to yeah. scientific talk. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Super important. You know, yeah. and the, the teacher is like, holy crap, yeah, I mean, and she's really doing a fantastic <laughs> yeah. job of that. So that's, that's one form of hybridization. I would also argue for trying to understand the physical phenomena as itself inherently hybrid. And so there's the jar. Yeah, that's cool which is like an artful choice of yeah, making visible some process of agitation, yeah. settling, and sedimentation. It's clear, <laughs> right? <laughs> you we, got a big, we got a big thing in, in Arizona oh, yeah, about the, clear. the clearness of the jar. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> in fact, not to make too big a deal out of it, I remember saying this, but I don't think anyone really gave a crap. <laughs> this jar? is oh, a mirror image one. of that jar. What do you see in this jar? God, you see all the crap. You see the amalgamated crap. What do you see in this jar? Exactly nothing. If we roll back in time with respect to the yeah. physical phenomena, this jar is full of fluid, liquid, and this jar is full of solids. It is the visual comparability of the two jars that's, that's cool. part of the lesson. It's not coincidental that they're the same friggin' jar, yeah, yeah. right? And so <laughs> that just goes again to the, and, and so I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting off no, on a tangent. Good. So that I would call that a setup, you know. And if we were watching Glenn T. Seaborg yeah. <laughs> give lectures on chemistry and the atomic structure of matter, he would have setups. Like I knew him on the Berkeley campus. Oh, okay. <laughs> he would have setups, uh, and they and everyone does who teaches science, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a setup. The hybridization part, I think, which is really cool, is that in order to use the setup, there have to be other means of demonstration and display. And so the body, the body is not a jar, <laughs> right? The body is a visible surface on which things can be enacted, and the whole body can enact yeah. dancing and uh, whatever. And so that's one hybridization. Yeah. And the fact that the little girl brings a Coca-Cola bottle and tells the story of shaking it up and having the foam come out and then it settles back yeah. down uh, is another hybridization, which is, oh, we're gonna bring another physical setup into the conversation and say it is, for the purposes of this science, the same as the jar. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what she's doing that's epistemically, cool. right? Mm. And I think the, the teacher kind of remarkably sticks with it. Yeah. So that, you know, this is legitimate addition of another case. So that's another form huh. of hybridization. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, the third, the third space here yeah. is a space where kids have agency to bring their own everyday yeah. experiences On into the, contact yeah. with the science. So, yeah. you know, in the sense of, you know, Vygotsky's ideas about the development of of uh, scientific concepts. The two live together in yeah. the same discursive space and, and people are bringing diverse, very useful materials to to bind and map them together. Yeah. 
and there it is. So that's another kind of oh, third, cool. third space idea. Yeah.